Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a very exciting video. Everything that I bought with my budget in 2021. End of January, but you know, it's still kind of, it's the, still the beginning of the year, you know? We're still closest to the end of 2021, so I thought that it was still okay to make this video. And I think it's gonna be good to like actually lay everything out and reflect on what I bought. So I'm going to include everything that I technically was part of my budget and then the exceptions that I made. Um, other stuff like replacements and just other general things that I bought, I'm not going to include, but I did include them in every like low buy update that I made, which I have a playlist for. Um, so I will link that in the cards right here if you want to go check that out um and i have made a video featuring i'm almost positive every single one of these products at some point whether it was a get ready with me first impressions watching video something like that so i'll try to go through and link every video that i made in the description box over the past year rather than in the cards because that's going to be harder for me, number one, and number two, just easier, I feel like, to reference. So I will try my best to do that. And I'm not gonna go in depth over everything that I bought, um, just because I don't have time. I'm filming this over my lunch break and I only have an hour. So let's just get started. But I will obviously go over everything, so. Hello, it's editing Laura here. Um, I would like to start off by saying after I've watched this all back. Number one, <laughs> quite frankly, this is not a low buy. <laughs> okay. Um, it was an attempt perhaps that I didn't commit to. So I would I just want to let you all know that I realize that and know that. Okay. This is essentially uh, a, a review of my quote unquote low by year, but mostly what I bought in 2021. Um, and also, if you are doing a low by now, and you clicked on this video because you want to like, see a low by recap and like, get inspired. And maybe you're trying to avoid watching people like buy stuff might want to skip this one. I mean, I think it's great. So if you want to watch it, I mean, I'm, I definitely encourage that. But if you fall into the former category, <laughs> maybe don't because it could make you feel some tip away. Um, and that's all I have to say. February 2021. I bought this like very, very early on. This was exactly $60, which was my budget for each month. Um, and I bought the Shine by SD Reserve Collection. This was so worth it. Um, I absolutely love these and I've used them consistently all year long. I am so hyped to try more Shine by SD. I absolutely like I said, love them. They're really, really beautiful, flaky, like iridescent shades that are super sparkly, shifty, so, so good. Really, really, um, you know, no regrets, no regrets. And then also I used my February budget in January to buy the Kaleidos Club Nebula palette in collaboration with Angelica Nikvist. Again, no regrets. I'm very happy that I bought this. I've done a lot of looks using this and I absolutely adore it. I adore the color story. I love Kaleidos' formula. So no regrets also. And this was like $45 I want to say. Um, so kind of like right in line with my February budget. So in February, obviously otherwise I didn't buy anything because that's kind of like my February purchase. In March, it was still good. Um, I don't have it with me, but I ended up buying the Kimchi Chic Freckle Tint, which I included as part of my budget, which I don't think I included freck purchases later in the year in my budget, but I wrote it down as something that I included. Um, I liked it. I used it up. 
but between I've talked about this before I think if you're in the States or somewhere where shipping is not expensive from kimchi chic beauty I like it a lot and it's definitely a more affordable alternative to freck but it kind of evens out in terms of shipping and duties and all that kind of stuff um, for that but I wouldn't be opposed to buying it again if maybe I had like an order I wanted to buy other stuff and I got free shipping kind of thing um, but yeah if you're in the States I would recommend checking it out over Freck because Freck is so expensive in April this was the month of the VIB sale which I was still rouge for I'm I didn't make it to rouge status which is a good thing although rip my free shipping um, at Sephora so you know improvements improvements and that um, order all I made was or all I purchased was the makeup forever artist color pencil and endless cacao this has become this is like one of the best purchases honestly I've ever made of makeup it was totally worth every single penny I spent on it I literally use it all of the time it is so so beautiful it's a more expensive liner but the tone is unbeatable I love the formula I I really want to buy more of those um, in the future. And I also got the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in the shade Fenty Glow. Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm is one of my favorite gloss formulas. Um, I'm wearing Diamond Milk on my lips today. Oh, if you're curious, I did film this look. It's in my January shot my stash. So it'll be up, I think, the next video that I post. But yeah, favorite lip gloss formula and I didn't have the original shade and I've 2021 was really like my discovery or like I felt fell in love with gloss this year whereas previously I had been a vehement gloss hater so I'm happy about that as well I also bought two elf blushes these are like the bite-sized blush duos I think they were four dollars each um, this one I use a lot this is the shade white peach I really do like these I just feel like I'm gonna hit pan really fast on them because they're like very powdery but I really like this is a quite quite a light peachy shade but I've used it a lot this year this one I've used less but I do still like it it's the shade watermelon um, I think they're really great affordable I was gonna say glosses blushes um, that come in I think a good amount of colors although I think a lot of them are quite light but I I don't know I really like them I definitely be interested in picking up more the opportunity just never kind of presented itself I try to shop on Amazon not as infrequently as um, I can in May I was going well May is kind of the year that or the year the month that I See, January, February, March, April, most of May, the first quarter or first third of the year, look at me sailing through my low buy and then we kind of lost our footing in May. So at the beginning of the month, I anticipated spending my entire budget and I did have some rollover from the previous months. So I bought the Kaleidos Flower Punk Palette, all the rage. Um, very popular when it came out and still like a ton of people say that, that this is say that this is their favorite palette that Kaleidos has ever come out with I like it um, I real I I do like it I really like it I think it's a unique color story and I love obviously this half of the palette um, and I loved all the looks that I created with it and I like love Kaleidos's formula and stuff for me just because I'm not a super light pastel eyeshadow wear. This is not a standalone palette for me most of the time just because I like something with a little bit more depth but this and companion ship. This is a companion palette with other palettes is really great and I love this packaging. It's beautiful. I also got, oops, in that order, the Space Age Prophecy Highlighter which again no regrets. It's super super special. I mean it is essentially like a multi-chrome iridescent shadow in a like highlighter formula compact but as someone who doesn't really use, like to use their eyeshadows on their face I don't know why that's a thing I'm just like so scared I'm gonna use them all up but anyway I absolutely adore this it's so fun so beautiful I've used it again a ton this year and it's not like anything else that I have at all 
Um, and so then I was like, that's it, cool. I think I also bought a NYX lip liner. Yeah, I bought the NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade Sandstorm, which again, I've used a ton. This is very much like my lips, but better. And I use it a lot to like also blend um, like deeper lip liners in with my lips, like in the center. So I again use this a ton this year. No regrets about that. At the end of the year, or no, at the end of the month is kind of when I made a little not misstep, but I overspent my budget by a lot, and I bought all of these Terra Moons shadows at the very, like, one of the last days of May. It was quite expensive, but honestly, I have a difficult time regretting it because they're so pretty, and I am so happy to have them. A Terra Moons video like using these in looks will be coming I just have been busy filming other things but probably will be coming in the next couple of weeks so June I was like mm, Kate we're not buying anything because I just spent all this money on whatever Terra Moons shades so technically I didn't use any money out of my budget quote-unquote but I did make an exception Kind of like an out of budget purchase for the Sydney Grace and Temptalia palettes. Now, this is something that I was like planning since they released or like talked about the fact that they were releasing these palettes for at least a couple months before they like actually released. So I had like been anticipating buying these for a while. This was not an impulse purchase, this was very much planned. I have made three looks on palettes videos with all of these. This is the Quintessence. I have the deep version of all of these palettes. Quintessence, On the Horizon, and Radiant Reflection. I don't regret these either. Um, I really like the formulas. My first time trying Sydney Grace. Again, not a cheap purchase, but I really do enjoy these palettes and I can't wait to play with them even more going forward um, and I really really do love Sydney Grace's formula especially the mattes the shimmers are nice metallics but the mattes are what like make me the most excited about the brand I feel um, but I just also tend to prefer like really really like the most intense shimmers you can get so July I went a little crazy, okay? I went a little crazy. I talked about this before, but I've, I decided to just treat myself for my birthday month, and it got out of hand. Although I will say everything that I did buy in July, I use a lot, so, <laughs> okay. So my the one thing that I actually was like, this is the one thing that you can buy for your birthday, and this is your present to yourself, because JD Glow had a like 30% off sale, and I bought their Galaxy Shadows. They're the big, oh my god, the big pens at the top. Not all of these. I didn't buy all of these in one go. Um, but I did buy a good amount. I have a JD Glow collection video. What crunched? Something crunched. I don't know. Um, so if you want to see all the shades that I have, I do have an in-depth video on that. Love JD Glow. Love their Galaxy Shadows. So again, no regrets. Um, I also got the Likely Makeup, where is it, blush palette, the Fairy Blush palette. I think they had a sale or something as well and I got this for like $30. Something again that I've been wanting forever and I was like, okay, another birthday purchase, treat myself. Um, and I gotta say, I have also gotten a ton of use out of this. The Likely Makeup blushes are my favorite blush formula in the world. I want Jordi to release like 78 more blush palettes and I'll buy them all. Um, the shade Rose Quartz is like one of, or yeah, Rose Quartz is one of my favorite blushes in my entire collection. It is the best pink blush. Absolutely love it. Although I will say a lot of people have said that this palette is generally like on the light side. If you have like a tan to medium to deep skin tone, which I obviously do not. Um, clown blush is still my favorite, but I really, really do love that a lot. I also, on a whim, every purchase that I made this month was on a whim, but I bought the, um, 
next wave matte lip liner in the shade cold brew which is not this one i think it's this one which is a deeper warm toned brown i wanted it to be a bit more neutral because i obviously couldn't swatch this in store but i do use it and like it um and i really like this wave matte lip liner formula from nyx and then oh my god jesus christ i also <laughs> bought the beauty bay wilderness palette this month Again, I have a hard time regretting it. Like when you put it in context of how much I didn't stick to my budget this month, um, it's difficult to justify, but like I love this palette. have used it a ton this year. This one I probably didn't need. The Beauty Bay Utopia palette I also bought when I bought the Wilderness palette, but I still really, really love all the shades in here. And I actually have used this as a companion palette quite a lot. I don't really use it alone, but I don't know I still like it and then <laughs> at the very end of the month I bought the Pat McGrath Div uh, skin fetish divine blush in the shade desert orchid again don't regret this at all because it is one of my new favorite neutral new <laughs> neutral blushes it is beautiful the formula is beautiful the tone the shade is beautiful it is Perfect. I used this non-stop this year and the imprint is still basically there and I use a really scratchy brush. I just love it. Is it worth $50? Probably not to most people and probably like probably not but it is a beautiful blush and I can't promise that I won't get more of them eventually. So I didn't include those in my budget because that's pretty much the rest of my budget that would have been gone for the year. Um, there's really no use in trying to justify that because there's no justification. So anyway, let's continue. Um, August really didn't buy. Okay, no, I did. Um, I impulse. This is my one legitimate regret purchase of the year. I was. I don't know what came over me, but I bought the Elf. Um, X Tiana Major 9 Electric Mood Palette and I actually don't hate it. I think there are a lot of pretty shimmers in here. I don't hate the mattes but it was $20. It set me back from not being like even, breaking even with my budget and I like I oh Jesus Christ I just hit myself in the face. I don't hate it. It's not like but I just didn't need it and I shouldn't have bought it. And if I had, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have bought it, which signals regret, I feel. Also, I'm going to include this. I didn't, I think I spent like $20 or less maybe on this. Um, so I'm not including, I didn't include it in my budget, but I used a gift card from Sephora and I bought the Pat McGrath Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. Again, no... Like, the best 20 fucking dollars I've ever spent. <laughs> um, it is beautiful. I love it with my whole entire heart. I adore it. And I've used it a ton. I'm wearing it a little bit on my eyes today. And I could not regret this less. But that is something that I did end up buying as well. September. I didn't buy anything again. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is where you shouldn't allow yourself to make exceptions for your low buy if you're trying to really stick to it. Because I didn't technically buy anything towards my budget, but I made an exception and I bought the Odin's Eye Legendary Diversa Collection. Again, don't really regret these <laughs> because they're beautiful and I would have been so sad if I didn't have them. I would have been fine would have been totally fucking fine if I didn't buy these but the fact if in light of the fact that I did I'm still happy that I have them um, we have the hummingbird palette in collaboration with Tina from the fancy face which I'm wearing some metallic shades from here in my lid today from this palette and the shade clear blue Annette or um, giant wolves palette in collaboration with Annette's makeup corner beautiful and the red dragon palette in collaboration with the judy what a gorgeous neutral palette first time trying odin's eye and i'm looking looking at them for more releases in the future 
I really, really was quite impressed by this formula. October, I kind of came to like be back at my regular regular budget amount of $60 in October and I bought the Lunar Beauty Moon Spell Palette Volume 2. I really like this palette. A lot of people didn't but I'm forever a lover of red and purple and pink eyeshadow so this really was right up my alley. I really really love it. I think I actually like this more than the original palette. Not gonna lie. And yeah, I've also done a first impressions and three looks on palette with this. I think I've done a three looks on palette with almost all of these eyeshadow palettes that I bought. Wasn't cheap. Mm, I think it was like $80. Yeah, but I, I do enjoy it a lot. And then November, we kind of lose the reins again, okay? I had gone into November being like I had some money left and so what I decided to do was buy the Beauty Bay Age of Opulence palette. I didn't buy it when it released because I was trying to be good and it released in October and I bought the Moonspell palette with my money for that. So then I was like, it's like $25 or something so I bought this. I was like, that's it for me and my girlfriend when I made that order, what a lovely lady she is, also bought me the uh, Beauty Bay and Jade palette which I will do a multiple looks video with this if anyone's still interested um it's coming okay it's coming and so I did get this as well although I didn't buy this okay but I did get it and then I had anticipated oh yeah oh no that was December never mind I think okay and then also there was a Sephora VIB sale and I was like let me just get one thing there was one thing on sale the melt digital dust highlight in the shade Phoenix was on sale for $30 and then I got 20% off that so I think I paid a little bit less than $30 like $28 or something for this and I was like budget is done I again love this as a glowy blush it is beautiful beautiful and so happy to get that price because normal prices are like $50 so love that purchase and then I was like I'm done going into like Black Friday end of November December I was like you can buy something from the Cleona like when they re like restocked their stained glass collection I was like if BH has a good sale you can buy something from them call it fucking quits Laura that's it that's what you get to buy in addition to other stuff so I did or no and and that's that's what I get to buy in addition to my budget so I did I bought some money I didn't and I didn't go over I set a limit of $100 for Cleona and I stuck to it so this is not all the shades I bought but my entire Cleona stained glass collection um, which I do have an updated video on these as well no regrets because I absolutely love the Cleona stained glass um, shadows especially the glitter multi-chromes ugh make my heart skip a beat and then I okay hold on let me get these okay and then BH had a sale so I was like let me buy just the palettes that I know I really have been wanting from BH lol now that they're filing for bankruptcy anyway so I bought four which and they were like pretty cheap they were at least I think 40% off I think so I bought the Lost in Los Angeles palette the Passion in Paris which I think I just uploaded to get ready with me using this the avocado toast And the blueberry muffin and I was like these are the four that I have wanted the most they're top of my list and I got them I'm so excited to use them I was like that's it um, and if you watched my 
BH Cosmetics swatch party video, then you know that that's not entirely the case, but we'll get into that in our, my December purchases. And then I was drunk one time, Huda Beauty bought a sale, or Huda Beauty had a sale, and I bought the Obsessions palettes that I also wanted the most. Again, difficult to say that I regret them because they are beautiful, but I didn't need them at all. Okay, so I also have a Get Ready With Me's and these, the Huda Beauty Wild Python. Surprised, actually, how much I really do enjoy these. Huda Beauty Jaguar, which was kind of like number one. I've wanted these ones since they released, like their, their Wild Obsessions. This is beautiful. This palette is so nice. Um, Huda Beauty Rich Nude Obsessions, which is another one that I've kind of wanted since it came out. A really beautiful, like, red-toned neutral palette. And the Khaki Haze, which didn't get good reviews, but I actually have not had any issues using it, and I really love the color story. So, that's that on that. December came. And what had happened was Likely Makeup released their Ugly palette, and I was like, well, Likely Makeup released a palette, so I have to get it. I'm also using this in my eyes today, um, and it's just like one of those things where I'm such a fan of the brand, and I've been waiting for them to release an eyeshadow palette for so long. No excuses, but I did buy it and I really the mattes in here are just so easy to use color story wise not my favorite but the formula is really nice and then I can't remember I might have bought these actually at the end of December to be honest but BH has cosmetics in hindsight makes fucking sense but they had like a massive sale I, all of these were like, I think, $6, and I was like, they're so collectible, and I just decided to live my best life, and I got all the rest of the Travel Series palettes, so I got Hanging in Hawaii, which is like a rosy neutral, again, I have a full swatch party video, Trendy in Tokyo, which is a rainbow, Summer in St. Tropez, which is a really nice color story. Smitten in Switzerland. Party in Puerto Rico. Beautiful in Barcelona. A neutral palette with some blues. And then a more in Amalfi. Another neutral palette. And then the Mimosa from the Weekend Vibes collection. Totally unjustified. There's literally nothing I can say to justify this purchase, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. And then they had another sale. <laughs> this is shameful, okay? It's like legitimately judge me. And all of these palettes were on sale for like $5, so then I got them all. Cringy, but I actually liked the color story, excuse me, um, from like as soon as they released these but I just was like no I'm not gonna get them and then after using and swatching the other BH palettes I was like it's hard to say no to that price anyway this is the do not disturb palette that's upside down but it's a really look at this little color story so nice the fuck off palette very cringy names which is like a really nice grungy color story let that shit go it's a beautiful, like, greeny neutral. Optimistic AF is a, like, orangey yellow. Looking like a snack. Look at this. Pink and cool tones and beautiful. And then low-key love you is, like, a pinky, ready peachy. Pinky peach, ready peachy color story. Again, there's literally nothing I can say that can justify that. Other than I love to hoard makeup okay I also made an order from NYX holy shit this is why you gotta keep track of this shit okay and then I made an order from NYX which I might have been actually the end of November I want to say I went on their website because I 
wanted to buy the next glitter primer and it was on sale for four dollars and i was like well let me look around then and i think they were having a sale on lip liners as well and i think all of all told this order was like less than thirty dollars um which is kind of why i ended up making it i got the right re two regular lip liners in the shade nude truffle which i'm wearing today it's been a long standing favorite since i got it I already made a dent in it and I haven't had it for that long and I also got the shade Espresso because I was looking for a darker cool toned lip liner, cool toned brown lip liner or neutral brown lip liner for a long time. I also got two suede matte lip liners. This is the shade Brooklyn Thorn which is a cool toned purple. I really like it. And the shade, oh no I just got three. Excuse me. I just got three of those and I've been using them a ton and then I also got the NYX Sweet Cheeks Glow Blush in the shade Daydream. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I honestly want to buy all of the shades of this. If you like a really glowy blush, almost like blush lighter vibes, it's so glowy. But it's so, so nice. And I love this like corally tone. Really, really beautiful. And then, is that it? Oh, and then, oh my god. So, also in December, I haven't actually talked about this yet. I'm not going to go super in-depth here because I probably will do a more in-depth haul. Maybe. Is that redundant? Maybe not, actually. Anyway, ColourPop. I hadn't bought anything from ColourPop in a long time. I was debating on whether or not I was actually going to buy from them. I just wasn't sure. Anyway, who, I don't know, I must have been on the site for some reason. Sometimes I just go on just to look and they were having a massive sale. So I bought four palettes. I bought the Lush Life palette for $5. And I was like, well, I, I re I've been wanting this palette for a while. It was like, it's difficult to say no to that. I didn't try that hard to say no. I also got the Cabana Club, again, for $5. The Lemoncello palette, which was on sale for 8 And then the Orchid You Not. Because everyone has been raving about this. And I, I love the looks of this, especially with that dark purple um, in it. Again, no justification for these, other than I got a good deal on them. And I'll probably do get ready with me using these. But I'm, again, not going to go super in-depth. And then the last thing, very end of December, I made an order from Colored Rain, because at that point I was like, let me just spend all my money. So, I really wanted to try their new palettes because they haven't released anything for a while. And if you watch me, you know that I'm somewhat of a colored rain stan. I absolutely love their formula. And it seems like they're kind of going a little bit towards a more affordable price point. Um, so, I just bought them. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, I bought their botanical palette, which is like rosy with a pop of green and then the rose garden palette which is also rosy with a pop of green i don't know i think these look both great and honestly i mostly just bought them because i wanted to see if their formula was the same and then i also bought the rebellious nudes palette while i was on there were they was this on sale maybe not but it was was pretty affordable and i mean look at this it's a neutral palette but look at the depth and look these metallic shades at the top look super super nice so anyway there's that and that is all i think that i bought i also bought two lip glosses towards the end of the month as well um were they having a sale i think something happened where they were having like a 20 percent off sale again from sephora so i bought the tower 28 shine on lip jelly in the shade magic and the Sephora Collection Outrageous Full Effect Volume Lump Effect Lip Gloss in the shade 01 is basically clear. Really like both of these. Again, I'm in my lip gloss era. Apparently, I've been using them or a lip gloss almost every day that I don't 
film and even on the days obviously that I do film as well and I'm shocked by how much I like this Tower 28 one I keep reaching for it and the Sephora one is a beautiful gloss and this was only like $16 or something and then not oh I forgot also at some point I also I did not pay for this with my own money okay this was through my um, pharma pre points but I did buy the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette which I have a few videos using this I do quite enjoy this I think the metallics are really beautiful and sparkly I wish that it had more depth but especially considering I didn't have to pay for it with my own dollars I really think that was a good purchase for me and then I can't remember what specific month it was but I did make an adept order so I'll sneak that in here at the at the end so I got the plain Jane which was unfortunate because these are beautiful they're so pretty expensive fucking expensive but so so pretty but adept as a brand is just questionable at best and I knew that going into it and then they were saying some really mean things and some ableist things to one of their customers and I was willing to overlook a lot before but I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break from Adapt and just really hope and pray that they get their shit together and start behaving like they're owners of a brand. Like I mean it's your brand you can do whatever you want but like at a certain point like be professional everyone else has to. Okay anyway so plain Jane I, I also did like a I was going to do dedicated videos, like swatching these and all this stuff, doing multiple looks, but I don't know that I will anymore. Um, I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts on Adept are. Nine Hydrin. I mean, they are super pretty, so I don't regret these. I think they're like a collection of absolutely super special shadows in my collection. Um, and then this is Kodan. But um, yeah, those are my thoughts on Adept. And that brings us to the end. Um... This is by no means a model of how you should behave with your finances. Um, 2022, hoping we bring it in, would have been fine if I hadn't gone off the fucking rails in November and December. Anyway, that's that on that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I mean, feel free to judge me, but at the end of the day, you don't have to buy all these things if you don't want to. You can live vicariously through me if you want to if you so choose um like i said before in no way shape or form am i saying that this is how you should conduct your life or if this is reasonable or that this is reasonable amount of makeup for any one individual to have um but it is what brings joy to my life in these dark times and saving feels kind of pointless at this point anyway maybe i'll probably won't live, leave that in here anyway Thank you so much for watching this video. At the very least, I can say everything I bought I loved and used. Except for this e.l.f. palette that I don't love as much as everything else. But everything else I literally can say with my full chest that I love and use and have used a lot. You can say a lot of shit about me, but you can say that I don't use the makeup that I buy. Anyway. Hope this was entertaining. Uh, <laughs> hope this was entertaining. That's pretty much all I have to say. Let me know how you did in 2021 and how you're going to move forward in 2022 with purchasing. Maybe you are really good and you're letting yourself roam free this year. Maybe you were like me and you're trying to rein it in a little bit. I don't know. Let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I got a jet. I got to go back to work. My lunch break's almost over, and I would love to see you all in the, my next video. Thank you so much. Bye!